So we've already said that GraphQL gives us an alternative and more flexible approach to managing data in our app than RESTful Design. But how does this idea of GraphQL actually work and what does it look like? Well, to understand GraphQL fully, first let's think about how a REST API might be structured. So typically, we'd set up specific URLs or endpoints in our API to control different pieces of data, for example, authors and books. Now from the front end, what we do is we'd make several different AJAX requests to these different endpoints to retrieve information about those different pieces of data, for example, authors. Now, when we're using GraphQL, we don't have to worry about setting up these different endpoints or making different requests to all these different endpoints. Instead, what we do is we have just one single supercharged endpoint where we map all of our data onto what is essentially a kind of graph. And I guess if you had to put it on paper, it would look something like this. So the idea here is that we can then jump into this graph at different points from our application, right? And we can land on this graph at different points like this. Then when we're in the graph, we can walk to related data to get that data and send it back as part of that request. So for example, imagine we had a request like this. We say we want the initial query, our landing point or entry point to be the book with an ID of one. So that initial request would have us land on this book with an ID of one. Then we're saying we want the title and genre from that book. Well, that's fine. We can get that from this piece of data. Then right here, we're saying we want you to walk to the author of that book. So we can say, okay, we'll walk to this author. It's connected in this graph, okay? Once we're here, we're gonna grab the name and the age of that author. Then I want you to walk to the books that that author has written. So again, we can walk to those books, their related data. And we can grab information on those books, the name in this case, and send those back as well. So once we've landed, got the data, walked to the relational data and collated everything together, we're gonna to send that back to the front end. So that would be the response to this query. We'd get all that data back, okay? And all of the time, this is just one query. So likewise, we could have a query that looks like this. We're saying initially our root query or entry point should have us land on the author with an ID of two. So let's jump and land here. We get the name of that author. Then I want you to walk to the related data, books. So we're grabbing the books of that author right here. Then from those books, I want you to get me the similar books. So maybe something with the same genre or a similar kind of plot and get me the name of those books. So we're on the books and we're looking at these and saying, okay, well, yeah, the similar books are this one and this one. So we can walk to both of those, grab those books and send those back as part of the response to the request as well. So you can see how flexible this whole approach of GraphQL is. We jump in and then navigate this graph right here and collect the data we need to send back after one single request to one single supercharged endpoint. Now, at first you might be like, huh, so what's so special about this? But I guarantee you, after using it for a while, you'll love the flexibility of querying data this way and you will not go back. So that is a crazily high bird's eye view of the idea behind GraphQL and what's kind of going on behind the scenes. In the next video, I just want to take a few minutes to go over how we'll be structuring our application and the different technologies that we're going to be using to create it.